Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. The Area 5 police say they are making progress with the investigation into the gruesome murder of eight-year-old Shante Franz Shante Scars. Shante's body was found in bushes on Tuesday after she was reported missing last Thursday. After discovering the body, Superintendent Leon Clunis revealed that the police have already been reaping results. We are following several leads. There is a person in custody from Sunday. We are in relation to something similar. We are going to look at that person as well. We are not going to leave it tone and turn until we get to the bottom of this picture. Relatives and community members in Sterling Castle St. Andrew, who were spearheading the search for days, were visibly upset about the killing. The police are also asking them to help with the investigation. I'm now appealing to all of you to give us the culprit. Because we know that somebody here knows exactly what happened. Nothing's a secret in the community. So we are begging you to give us the culprit. But well, one thing that we ask for is cooperation from everybody. Because what we don't want is no job with justice. Because we're going to hear all kind of things. But we don't want no job with justice. Come to any one of us. Go to Sterling Castle. Poli I mean, to the police station, Reynolds. Speak to Inspector Levan Shirley or any other police you have confidence in. And just give us some information. You can do it in such a way that nothing will come back to you. Because all we want to do is bring justice to the parents and to the community. And following the tragedy, school administrators at Red Hills Primary, where Shante was a student, are planning to increase counseling sessions. School principal Paul Messam says teachers and students have been devastated since Shante went missing. Since last Friday, they were holding counseling sessions with students and community members. But having this now, we, are, we have to change gears and have, at some point in time, have some prayer vigil and, and, and see how best we can, can calm our students, because you know we have students doing exam at this time. But we are hoping for the best. Violence against children must stop. That comment from Minister of State in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Alanda Terrellong. He was speaking at a recent conference hosted by the Child Protection and Family Service Agency. It's concerning because the violence against our children, it shows that as a society, we have lost our way. We have lost our way by not taking care of the most vulnerable amongst us. Our children are the future of our society. As a result, he says the government is committed to strengthening the law to we protect will do vulnerable everything children. We can to strengthen the laws to ensure that persons who commit violence against our children, that they are dealt with swiftly and efficiently. I also want to encourage Mrs. Gage Gray and her team that we all work together to ensure that the amendments to the adoption regulations, that those amendments are dealt with swiftly. We have been speaking about the amendments for far too long. Mr. Terrellong added that children who are abandoned or neglected by their parents should not be left in state care for more than 9 to 12 months. He believes parental rights, where a child's biological parent maintains a right in the child's life, is a major deterrent to persons who want to adopt. I have made the recommendation that once 9 months or 12 months have passed, then we must go to the court to say, George, this particular parent has relinquished their rights because they have abandoned their child for the same 9 months that it took them to carry the child. Some of the young people enrolled in the National Service Corps will be trained as police officers. The announcement was made yesterday by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in the House of Representatives. The National Service Corps has been receiving overwhelming support with thousands of young people joining the Jamaica Defense Force. The police force is, however, facing a crippling shortage in manpower due to resignations and migration. The force has around 11,000 members, and the security leadership wants that to increase to about 14,000. Using the Jamaica National Service Corps to rapidly increase 
the manpower of the JDF, some of those members will ultimately find their way through the recruitment process into the JCF. So we are using the JNSC as a mechanism to increase the manpower of the force so that we can stand up more of these zones of special operations. The Prime Minister said the additional numbers will be used to man zones of special operations Zosos in other parts of the country. The Zosos were extended for another 60 days in Denham Town, West Kingston and Mount Salem, St. James. Both have been in operation for more than 500 days and have been largely successful in reducing murders and other major crimes. Concerns this afternoon about the state of a Jamaica Public Service wooden light post at the gate of the Breadnut Hill Basic School in St. Anne, which residents say is on the verge of collapsing. But the JPS says the post is not a threat to residents. We have more from TVJ's Krista Campbell. A Jamaica Public Service light post at the gate of the Breadnut Hill Basic School in St. Anne that has staff, parents and residents concerned. Uh, you see the little kids them, you know sad this one be if this light post drop down out here and them run out and them 220 volt here catch these little kids. You know serious that will be. And it's a serious, serious issue. Life is at stake. Teachers and children's life is at stake. Are we going to wait until a person's life is is um, gone before we come and make a move at the issue. The people say they're also worried about other lives, pointing to a church across from the school, houses, shops, and other buildings nearby. They say despite their efforts, they've not been able to get the JPS to address the matter. It's about a year now. I have spoken with them when they were con conducting work in the area, and nothing has been done. We keep reporting to JPS all over and they ignore it and it's so serious where every day we get up refreshed because we don't know when a disaster will happen with the student at the school. TVJ News sought answers from JPS Media and Public Relations Manager Audrey Williams, but she says the light post is not a threat. I can understand persons looking on might not see it that way, but from an engineering standard point of view, the pole is not a danger, it is not going to fall. The heartwood of the pole has not been compromised at all. We will nonetheless be going to do some rehabilitative work on the pole. So by the end of this week, actually, that work will be complete. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. There should be no more garbage collection issues. That statement from Spanish Town's Mayor Norman Scott, who laments that several areas in St. Catherine continue to struggle with huge garbage, garbage pileups despite a significant increase in property tax collection. Poor garbage collection topped the agenda at the recent general meeting of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation. An upset Spanish town mayor, Norman Scott, insisted the long-standing issue should be addressed once and for all now that property tax collection is at an all-time high, from $3.4 billion in 2012 to $7.6 billion in 2015-2016, and now... A whopping $8.5 billion has been collected the period ending uh, March 31. So there is no reason that solid waste can come and say they're having financial challenges. They don't. So it must be something else. He also pointed to several new garbage trucks which were recently added to the National Solid Waste Management Authority fleet. NSWMA representative Nigel Golden said despite ongoing issues with illegal dump sites across the parish, there was some success. In the town centre of Spanish Town, we are experiencing 100% collections between 5 to 6 nights per week. We collect all the areas in the Spanish Town Town Centre. But some councillors raised concerns about several communities in their divisions. The chair of primary school for months and I've been asking them, need a truck, they need a back I said, I'm assisting with a back The truck we break half every week is a different situation. I looked at the news last night and there was a fire up there and the truck break even. I must remove the video, the one phone call, and I said, that truck, remove it. Kingston is not Jamaica, Mr. Chairman. 
and the people of Trinidad hated taxes too, and they deserve better, Mr. Chairman. He called for action to be taken against the NSWMA to address a long standing problem he says he's been complaining about for some time. Mr. Chairman, that's been over a year. And these are the kind of promises that we have been making. I've been brought to my business, so I'm now asking the Chief Public Health Inspector to serve a notice of the NSWMA in all of our employees. That's been a year, so this will be our man now. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. The Ministry of Tourism says it will increase its focus on art in Kingston to attract tourists to the city. Portfolio Minister Edmund Bartlett said there will be a partnership with Edna Madney and the National Gallery to take creative pieces to iconic areas like Trenchdown, where reggae music is already an attraction. And I want to challenge the art community. Let us use some of that to develop creative placements in these communities. Because I want to see the transforming effect that art and culture has on the lives of people demonstrated, because I know it does. It gives a sense of pride. It, 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 it creates a feeling of cultural connection, of a heart-to-heart. -heart. A painting is a soul-to-soul -soul connection reflected on canvas. Music touches the heart and it connects people. And so we want festivals. He said the ministry is trying to effect social change in violence-plagued communities and feels the increased spending in those areas would help improve people's lives. The minister was speaking at an art exhibit titled New Beginnings. And time now for a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the Health Report, we'll look at the impact of domestic violence on children. Children may want to talk about it, others may not. So you have to kind of follow their cue. And you have to um, you know, try to kind of process it with them as to what they understood and to make them make some sense, if possible, of what has happened. Um, as part of the healing process. They may like play with a dolly house with figures and they may show you what's happening in their mind through play or sometimes we ask them to draw and that is how they express their feelings and express what is in their mind as, as to what may have happened or what they may have witnessed. That's the health report this evening in Primetime News. And now for today's Healthy Living Tip. Here is how you can talk to a child experiencing domestic violence. Start with a message of support. Find out what they know. Tell them it's not their fault. Tell them violence is not okay. Try to stay calm. And don't put any burden on them. And in sports, Cricket West Indies President Ricky Skerritt has expressed sadness at the passing of former West Indies Cricket Board WICB President Jamaican Pat Rousseau. Rousseau died on Tuesday night after ailing for a while. He was a sharp legal and business mind and it was reflected during his time in charge of the organization between 1996 and 2001. He, along with former Chief Marketing Executive Chris Daring, was instrumental in signing a record international television deal for the WICB, now CWI, with Sky, and convinced the International Cricket Council to stage the ICC Cricket World Cup in 2007 in the Caribbean. Rousseau was also the driving force behind the incorporation of the WICB in November 1998, starting the transformation of the organization into becoming a more corporate operation and the permanent relocation of its corporate headquarters to Antigua. Pat Rousseau was 85 years old. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.